Ready to test your knowledge of all things Bee Gees? Take the test below and let us know your score in the comments. Um, I feel like this quiz was specifically designed for me. There is no way that anyone is going to be able to answer these questions better than myself. I feel like I have proven my worth by making not one, but two videos ranking every single Bee Gees album. I feel like I am the perfect subject for this YouDiscoverMusic.com pop quiz. Let's get this show on the road. Also, before I start, I'd just like to mention that I've been waiting for about three hours since I woke up to record this, and this is the... I, I just have to go for it because there's this cunt dog outside that has not shut the fuck up all fucking morning. Shut up! How well do you know the Bee Gees? From rock to disco fever, the Bee Gees have helped shape the sound of pop music. But how much do you know about the legendary group? We are about to indeed find out that I, I, I'm sorry, this camera angle is awful, but like, I can't. I, if I do this, like, even though you can plainly see that the blinds are closed, but if I put the camera like this, Suddenly, it's just, it's just blasting light. I guess we'll try it like this. And if people want to complain in the comments section, well, here's my, here is my response to those complaints. Blame the sun. All right, that's just the same thing. How much do I know about the group we're about to find out? The title of the BG's first top 20 hit referenced a fictional mining disaster in which state? Which state could it possibly be? This is a song off of their their first album, actually. Um, I used to have this song in my iTunes, I think. I might have had this, uh, yes, I did have this song in my iTunes, and it is called the 1949 New York Mining Disaster. 1941, never mind. Uh, it was, it was, it, the, the number, the number was after the name of the song. Sorry, my fucking bad. Which 1970s single was the group's first number one in the United States? Was it Lonely Days, Jive Talking, or How Can You Mend a Broken Heart? Um, Lonely Days was the biggest, I think, song they produced internationally, I think, from, from the inception of the, of the group. Jive Talking was like a revolution. And How Can You Mend a Broken Heart came out in 1978, so it, it's, it's either Jive Talking or Lonely Days. Please, goddamn, it was, it was it was How Do You Mend a Broken Heart? Okay, the United States is uncultured, I've decided. What is widely recognized as the group's, group's first disco album? It should be um, Mr. Natural, but To Whom It May Concern is not a disco album. Trafalgar is not a disco album. It should be... Mr. Natural, but this quiz, this quiz is already garbage. In what country did the Bee Gees record their first two albums? I mean, if it's not Australia, I'm gonna be mad. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we did it. We did the good. For which major musical film did Barry Gibb write and co-produce the title track? Um... Hmm... Three? I feel like that's the only one that it could be, because that was like, that was right when they got huge, so yeah. Which famous romantic duet was penned by the Bee Gees? Don't go breaking my heart is no. Ain't no mountain high enough, yes. <laughs> These are some fantastic options. Um, it's Islands in the Street. <laughs> Which song from the Saturday Night, oh look at that, they cut off the E. They cut off the e. Saturday Night Fever soundtrack performed by the group was originally written for Yvonne Element. Is it more than a woman? How Deep Is Your Love was written for this. If I can't have you, oh my goodness, I got a question wrong. This is unfair. What was the first Bee Gees album to be recorded digitally? I'm gonna assume it was the one that was released after recording albums digitally was, was widely popularized. Yep. <laughs> Eric Martin, the fucking man, the absolute beast. He is a he is a legend. He is a legend in his own right. Which Gib brother sang on the Sesame Street Fever album? What? Since when was this a thing? Um, I'm gonna go with Andy. No, 
It was, it was, it was, I was gonna go with Robin, but then I saw Andy and I was like, wait a minute, is this a trick question? Which distinction did Barry Gibb earn in 2018? I do believe it was Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductee. You know, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is full of shit, so knighthood. The man was knighted by the queen herself. So that's the entire quiz. It was kind of stupid. Some of those questions were bad. But we all know that none of my online quiz videos are complete until we take a look into the more intelligent side of the internet. Very hard Bee Gees quiz. How well do I know the Bee Gees? Our quiz will test you out. Can you get them all? We're gonna catch them all, guys. Where were the Gibbs brothers born? Oh no, it actually is tough. Okay, uh-oh, I've made a mistake. Isle of Man, oh my god, I got it, let's go. Let's go! After moving to Australia, which single gave them their first chart hit? The only one I recognize is Spicks and Specs. Oh my god, dude, we're doing it. We're doing it! Which song in 1967 gave them their first major hit? Definitely New York Mining Disaster. We've already been through this. What was originally the title for their 1975 hit single, Jive Talking? I'm gonna guess Drive Talking. Yeah, that's the only one that makes sense in the, like, the entire thing because, you know, the lore for Jive Talking is that Barry was driving over a bridge and he was like, you know what? This would make a sick riff. What inspired the Gibbs brothers to write the lyrics for Staying Alive? A Marlon Brando line from The Godfather. That's the only correct answer. Boo. Boo. Bad. Bad inspiration. How many weeks did the Saturday Night Fever album stay at number one on the US chart? It was a long time. Was it 30 weeks? It was not 30 weeks. Oh, okay. The Bee Gees song, The Massachusetts, was originally intended for which group? The Seekers, The Searchers, or Scott McKenzie? World-renowned musical group, Scott McKenzie. I'm gonna guess The Seekers. Yeah, that's the only one that makes sense out of that entire list. What is I've Gotta Get a Message to You About? It's about the United States Postal Service and how the um, orange man in chief was trying to um, force them into shutting down by defunding them or something. I don't know. Uh, he was in the electric chair. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty edgy. I think they mentioned that in like the uh, um, This Is Where I Came In documentary, I want to say. Which Bee Gee was married to Scottish pop singer Lulu? Not the Lulu that Metallica um, <laughs> co-op, co 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 whatever it's called, collaborated with. I'm gonna i I'm gonna think that this is was. I'm gonna go with Maurice. Oh man! Oh man! Oh man, we're getting the tough one. In which year did Mar Maurice Gibb die of cardiac arrest? Oh man. This was a heartbreaking moment, dude. The answer's 2003, by the way. I was I was five. In which year did the Gibb brothers move to Sydney? Live in Sydney, okay. Um 61? Yeah, dude. I thought they lived there, like, longer than that. What is the title of the Bee Gees debut album released in 1965? Um, this is an easy one. What was the name of the band the Gibbs Brothers formed in the late 50s? Oh my, I don't actually know this. I thought it was Barry Gibb and the Bee Gees. <laughs> is it this? No. The Rattlesnakes. Oh man. Edgy. Which British comedian appeared as Mean Mr. Mustard in the Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts club band film to which the Bee Gees provided the soundtrack for. Why didn't the Beatles provide the soundtrack for this album? I don't know. Peyton Sellers. I don't know. Peyton Sellers. I just, I, I just actually said that. Oh my god. Which member of Crosby, Stills, and Nash played the percussion on the Saturday Night Fever album? How am I supposed to know this? I'm gonna guess Steven Stills because I like alliteration. Hell yeah, alliteration pulls through for us one more time. Which singer scored a hit with his version of Bee Gees' How Can You Mend a Broken Heart? Otis Redding? No, it was Al Green. Very, very generic name. The long lost member of the Green family. He, get, he didn't race. Which Bee Gees song is known as the first chart topper in which Barry Gibb uses his now trademark fals falsetto in a lead vocal? I mean, that's, what? You should be, oh, you, is it? Because didn't it come on um, Children of the World and they released and they released Jive Talking first? I don't know. None of this makes sense. I guess Jive Talking was not that, you know, loved by the critics. It was only loved by real fans. 
Which song was voted as the nation's favorite BG song in the UK television special in 2011? The only way that I know about this is... Wait. Bitch. Bitch! It's... No. I literally, I watched the countdown. I literally watched the countdown, and it was How Deep Is Your Love? Broken ass piece of shit quiz. In which area of Manchester, England did the Gibb brothers live in the late 50s? I don't know. <laughs> Zero questions left. I got 11 out of 20. Well, I guess it was very hard. They weren't lying. I guess we'll do one more, because as this dog has not shut up, we need to get some good content that does not involve the dog not shutting up. BG songs 1978 to 2005. Oh man, can I name every BG song? Let's go. I don't know anything about Sgt. Pepper's. Let's just start with Spirits Having Flown. So it starts with um, Tragedy. Then it goes into Too Much Heaven. Then it goes into Love You Inside and Out. Um, reaching Out. Um, Spirits. Then it's Stop. No. After Spirits, it's it's not living together, that's the second to last. And then you have Until. Um, I'm Satisfied. What's the last song of Spirits? Um, it's Search. Fine. There it is. Alright, BG's Greatest. How deep is your Oh, there's just so many songs again. I can't keep them straight in my head. I know what they are, but I don't know their name. Oh, there's just so many, dude. I cannot handle this nonsense. Okay, I went eight minutes without cheating, and I got 119. What did I miss? Closer than close. That's an obvious one. Damn, dude. Oh, that was on one night only. Let's go. Okay, I only missed one from in my actual um, iTunes, so I feel like that's a pr that's 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 pretty good. And I had 119 others, so I feel like I did pretty good there. All right, I'm giving up. Um, how did I do compared to everyone else? All right, no one else tried that hard. I feel like that's a, that's enough for this video. So thank you all so much for watching. This has been another BGS video. I guess I'm gonna make one of these every year or something. In any case. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been Cup of Games, and I will see you in whatever I do next. Bye! So you can you can just be like, oh, ah. Like a fucking banshee. <laughs> the video just ends immediately. It knows. It knows. Oh, God. Oh, it's so bad. Why? Why would I do this? Why would I allow this to exist? What have I done? No. What have I done?